everybody. Welcome to this segment of Bringing the Zoo to You. Today we are going to take you behind the scenes with our kangaroos and wallabies. Well, who I have here is Nala. Nala is a red kangaroo and she has been with us since she's about a year and a half from Garden City. And we also have in this yard her son Mark. And she's about four or five years old and he is about three years old. So they're about two years apart. Um, the females of this species reach maturity at about 14 months. And the males will typically kind of go off on their own at about two years. Now what's interesting about the red kangaroo is it is the largest species of marsupial and they are found in Australia. And as you can tell, she's snacking on the banana. I'm not sure what's going on behind us. And she's getting some banana and a little bit of peanut butter today. Those are her favorite treats. And some little things that you can tell on her is her tail. So a lot of marsupials, like the red kangaroos that we have here and our redneck wallabies, is they use that tail for balance. And you'll notice that Nala is a little bit smaller and she's kind of got a red coloration to her fur. And the females tend to be a little bit smaller and they can have a bit of a blue hue to their uh, coat. And in Australia, they actually call them blue flyers for that reason. So with these ones, you'll see the males will get really, really dark red. Um, and the females kind of have that blue hue, which you can almost tell a little bit by this angle that she's at right now. Um, and they are very kind of skittish by nature. They don't see very well, but they hear very well. And you'll see her ears kind of moving around. So if something comes by and she's not sure what it is, she might spook a little. And you also saw her kind of licking her paws. She might be licking a little banana off. But another reason that they might do that is to cool themselves. So when they get excited or when they get overheated, a lot of times they'll lick their paws and their forearms and that allows them to cool themselves off, which is really important when they live in Australia. It gets very hot. And we kind of wanted to introduce you to these guys and show you a little bit of the behind the scenes of their yard. And we also wanted to introduce our redneck wallabies that we have because we actually have three babies. So we're going to go over to that yard. I'll tell you a little bit about them and we'll see if we can spot some of them. To our other mob that we have here at Rolling Hill Zoo. These are our rednecked wallabies. They also go by Bennett's wallabies. And you just saw Barley coming out into the yard to join our three females. As you see the females hopping around, we'll try and get you up close. And they all have babies. So Barley is two years old. And the three females that we have are Ava, Marge, and Gertie. So Marge is actually Ava's offspring and Gertie is Ava's half-sister. So all three of them are related and all three of their babies will be uh, kind of related as well. So we'll have three generations here at the zoo, which is pretty cool all at the same time. So the babies are starting to venture out. You'll see them kind of hopping around and the mob sizes can get anywhere from one to 30. So they tend to um, pair up in different groupings and wallabies are really interesting because they actually function with hierarchies. So they'll tend to socialize with um, different members of the mob based off of similar social standings within them. And you see him hopping around. You might see some of the females hop around too. And they are um, macropods, so they have large feet. And just like kangaroos can get up to 35 miles an hour with those large feet, these guys also get very, very uh, quick spr springs of action. So you'll see them hop around very quickly in the yard, although the females are a little bit slower with those big babies in there. And the babies are starting to venture out. And wallabies and kangaroos, they uh, function off something called embryonic diapod. So these females that you see here can actually have up to three babies at a time. They can have one baby completely out of the pouch. They can have one baby in the pouch and they can actually have one fertilized ova that hasn't started uh, the process yet. So it's a really interesting uh, process and within some species of wallabies, they can actually stay, uh, the fertilized ova can stay there for up to 11 months before it will move into the pouch. So as soon as one of those babies leaves the pouch, then that, um, that embryo will move, will start developing within about 30 days and then it'll move into the pouch. And that will allow the other baby to start uh, moving when it's about seven months old, they're on the ground. So hopefully we'll see some of the babies pop out of the pouch and start venturing out. 
and they're typically self-sufficient by about 10 to 12 months. So you're gonna see them moving around. By the time you see them out on the ground, they're between seven and 12 months old. Um, so they spend a lot of time in that pouch and wallabies don't see very well. So they are very sensitive to sounds and the different things around them. And they'll also use those ears. They kind of have bigger ears and they'll swivel those ears around. And if they feel like there's danger, they'll do something similar to rabbits where they'll kind of stomp their foot. And that allows the other wallabies to know that there might be some danger around. And they also have a cool adaptation with their teeth that's similar to elephants, where they actually have their molars will, the old ones will push out for new molars to come in and they can go through four sets of teeth in their lifetime. So they have a lot of really amazing adaptations that allow them to function in the heat of Australia. They also lick their paws and their forearms. And if they don't have water available, they'll actually dig up the roots um, in the ground and they'll get the water from some of the roots and that way they are able to get water even in climates where water might not be readily available. So we're going to see if we can get really close and we're going to get really quiet so we can see if any of the babies want to pop out and hopefully we guys can introduce you to our three new additions to the zoo soon.